so CPAC, CPAC is almost over right now. Everybody's filing in to see President Trump and got a chance to bump into Kerry Diot. He's a former member of Canadian Parliament, an MP. He's from Edmonton. Edmonton, Alberta, and I love coming down to the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm uh, from Long Island, so we have, a, we have a big connection between us and Edmonton in the 1980s, you know, hockey. So, um, so tell me, uh, any news, interesting news going on in Canada lately? What do you think? Well, I'm, uh, I'm really quite touched by the fact that so many Americans supported the Freedom Convoy. And the best news that we got, the most objective news, rather, yeah, the most objective news that we got and, and the best news that we got came from the United States because our media in Canada was demonizing these truckers as some kind of crazy, racist, uh, out of control freaks. And whereas Americans really get the concept of freedom, I think we need more of that in Canada. As a, as a conservative, a former conservative member of parliament, I think that uh, Freedom is, uh, is very fragile. You see what's going on with Ukraine right now. You see where members of parliament in, in Ukraine are having to take up arms to repel an army. Um, freedom is delicate. And uh, that's why a conference like this is so important. It's, it's good to hobnob with conservatives, learn, uh, get training with conservatives, and get that message across that, that freedom is fragile and we've got to protect it. So I was just talking with uh, Brady Duke. He's running for Congress here in Florida, and he's a former Navy SEAL. One of the things we were talking about was the Constitution and and how you know how he he believed and vowed to support the Constitution. I'm former military myself, the Constitution obviously. But what does Canada have? Like what 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 differentiates them from a country that's not so free that that makes them free? And why aren't they holding fast to that? Like, why is Trudeau getting away with it? Well, obviously, we don't have a constitution, and uh, we don't have the U.S. Constitution, but we, we, do have, we do have a constitution, and we do have a right to freedom of speech and free assembly and freedom of association and all of those things. However, like anything, it's a document that you have to defend, and rights can get trampled just as they are in, in the U.S. at times. They can be trampled, so you have to stand up and fight for them. And that's what the truckers, I, I truly believe, are doing. They, we have freedom of association, freedom of assembly, and freedom of speech. And they were, they were. The, the, the shocking thing is that there could be a law invoked, or there could be, essentially, what was what was happening was a form of martial law trampling those those rights. We, you know, we have we come from the the, the, the British side, where the, the British have freedom of speech. We come from a strong, uh, we're a strong democratic country, but it's a lesson in that every citizen of, of every country has to be re ready to defend those rights uh, because, because politicians will sometimes try to trample them. We were talking before about my favorite Canadian MP, I, I, because you're not in, in the parliament right now, so I can say that, right? And, and so Cheryl Gallant, I think her claim to fame was she was the only conservative to vote, I think, against the Paris Accords and supporting Donald Trump. So what do you think? Cheryl Gallant is a true gem, and she's a, uh, she's a grassroots politician all the, all the way. I remember when I sat behind her in the House of Commons. Uh, I was a rookie. She had been there for many years, and I would watch her writing cards to her constituents if somebody had an anniversary or sadly if somebody passed away to write cards to constituents. She was a true grassroots roots politician and a true conservative and I really look up to her and learned a lot from her. Yeah, we were up, uh, we were up there in the Laurentian Valley. There was a problem where they were opening the dams too much or something and caused all these floodings and they were coming, I, I don't quite remember, but they were like locking down uh, permits for people to repair their homes. I, I don't know if you were familiar with that, but but Cheryl was like she was fighting for the people. It was really really in engaging f as an American to have seen that. Cause and she she was always one. She was always one of the best people standing up for her constituents because all politics is local, right? 
And it comes down to whether you're willing to go to bat for the people who, who put you in that office. And Cheryl always was. She's, she's amazing. She was an inspiration to me. She's uh, a true conservative. And uh, I hope that one day she'll get down here and, uh, and soak up some of CPAC. I'm sure she'd... she'd yeah, I would, love to, I would love to bring her down. That would be great. Awesome. So what's next for Kerry? Well, you know what? I've said it to uh, other conservatives. I've said it back in Edmonton, Alberta, which is where I'm from. I want to run again. I want to take my seat back from the socialists. And I think that people are fed up with, uh, with socialists. They're fed up with, uh, with Justin Trudeau, and, and it's very winnable. And that's what I want to do. When's the next election for you? Well, you know, we're in a minority government right now, so Justin Trudeau, all things uh, willing, could fall at any time. Uh, if he does more stupid things like trying to... Uh, trying to ban truckers and, and uh, take their bank accounts, he could fall at any day. So here's hoping and uh, here's hoping we have another election. I, and I want to take another run out. What do you think about the New York Islanders' uh, 19 consecutive playoff streak victories? Well, you know what? The Islanders and the, uh, the Oilers had, they were like great teams in their day. And uh, hey, if uh, the perfect matchup might be the Oilers and the Islanders in the Stanley Cup Finals this year. Yeah, not for our Islanders. They're, they've been hit hard with COVID and a whole bunch of other things. But anyway, can I get a Maple Leafs 1967? Ah, uh, no, I'm not a Maple Leafs fan. Oh, no, no, that, neither am I. That's what, The last time they won the Cup was 1967. That's exactly it. That's, that's old history. That's really old history. I, I was two days old. I was probably about 11, but I was a Montreal Canadiens fan in those days. Oh, you were? Yeah, yeah, they've, that's a great team too, you know. K-E-R-R-Y-D-I-O-T-T-E dot -T -T -E com. And really, uh, really nice to talk to you, Roger. And yeah. We'll see you around.